What's up YouTube? This is Coach Donnie with ElevateYourself.org. Some of you have left some comments in the spiking timing video about when you should leave for spiking a 4 and a 5. And if you haven't seen the spiking timing video, please click on the video link in the description below before watching this video because a lot of the information that I talk about in this video will be based on that video. When you're spiking a high ball, also known as a 4 or a 5 set, you generally want to leave right when the setter touches the ball. And that's a good starting point to gauge how your timing should be. Timing is going to be half your responsibility and half the setter's responsibility. You want to make sure that you have consistent spiking footwork first and take care of your part to be as consistent as possible before worrying about how to adjust to the setter. And if you want to learn how to develop proper spiking footwork, please click on the video link in the description below. Assuming that you have very consistent spiking footwork, now we'll talk about how to adjust to your setter. Let's say you leave right when the setter touches the ball but you find yourself running past the ball or going under the ball and hitting the ball out. What that means is you're probably going too early. And this is also dependent on the style of setting that your setter sets. If your setter holds the ball a little bit longer before they release it, or they tend to set very high, usually you have to wait a little bit longer before starting your approach. So if that is your setter where they hold the ball a little bit longer or they set the ball very high, you need to wait until after the ball is released before you start your spiking approach. The second type of error that tends to happen when you're struggling with your spiking timing is if you spike into the net, contacting the ball at your wrist, or just simply unable to reach as high as you can and you end up swinging down here. What that means is that you're leaving too late. And this tends to happen when your setter tends to set very low in height or they have a very fast release on their set. So if you find yourself consistently hitting into the net or contacting the ball down here on your wrist or a low contact point, you probably want to start your approach a little bit earlier so you can contact the ball at the peak of your vertical. In summary, if you're struggling with your spiking timing, usually it's half of your responsibility and half of the setter's responsibility. Your responsibility is to make sure that you have consistent footwork and you, that you leave at the same time every single time. Then you need to observe what kind of setter that you have. If you're running under the ball or tend to hit out, that means you're early. You need to wait a little bit longer before you start your approach. 
If you tend to hit into the net or contact the ball at your wrist, that means you're starting your approach too late so you need to leave a little bit earlier. Let's say you're playing with a new setter that you've never seen before or never played with before and a good starting point is to leave right when the setter touches the ball. Then you make the appropriate adjustments based on what type of errors you're making or what type of sets the setter is giving you, whether you need to leave earlier or later. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any other suggestions regarding volleyball, athletic training, or fitness, please leave your suggestions in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.